Hello, welcome. Uh, this is a uh, commentary for a match in I2 uh, between Arjun Nagpal and Shelani. Uh, so let's see. I uh, don't actually know what game this is, starting a little late. Um, Okay, so this, this is game one, um, but yeah. So, what's been going on here? Um, so we've got a Shepherd, Seer, Silk Merchant for draw, Guildmaster, uh, ch -ch -ch yeah, this is this is interesting. There's a uh, good trashing with junk dealer rats, uh, farmland for some gaining, uh, guildmaster. Uh, not the greatest here, because um, there is uh, no plus buy, so you would just be doing some sort of rats guildmaster thing if you wanted to go with guildmaster. Uh, and I think here you probably wouldn't. Fellowship of Scribes is. Uh, not the greatest of allies. Um, I mean, I'm sure it can help, but uh, mostly I would probably just want to go like Silk Merchant, Seer, lots of silvers, um, maybe a Swamp Hag or two. Well, maybe even not necessarily with a Swamp Hag or two. Um, but uh, yeah, I think just. Uh, Sears, Silk Merchants, Silvers, Caravans, one or two Rats, and uh, yeah, you're good to good to go there. Because you've got Trade, too, to be turning your Coppers into Silvers, um, to deal with Rats if they're starting to overrun your deck. But... Oh wait, no. Psh, Silk Merchant is, is plus buy. Um, yeah, so then the other thing would just be not really a village, per se, unless you go with Gollum, um, which Shelony seems to be doing. Um, so yeah. Mm. And even then, I think, uh, yeah, just Sears, hmm. so there's Necropolis at least as well, uh, to give you a bit more, but, um, yeah, building, building on this one, not totally sure what would be how it could best be done, but probably uh, Silver Silk Merchant and then uh, Junk Dealer on the 5. Because uh, it is a bit problematic uh, that instead of Estates, there are the Shelters uh, for Seer Draw. But yeah, both both these decks look uh, kind of fat for uh, where they are. They uh, let's see. So first, so they opened potion silver, silver silk. So silver silk, I think, is is definitely the better one. Um, yeah, turn three on the first fives, I think, uh, 
Seer and Guildmaster. Seer is definitely better than Guildmaster here. Um, but I think both of those should have been junk dealers to just get started on trashing. Um, yes, yeah, so the first... Or even was the first junk dealer. Turn seven? Yeah. Yeah, they definitely should have had rats or junk dealer or something in their in their decks by this point. Um because junk dealer is uh pretty pretty decent decent there. <laughs> Maybe even want two and then uh, eventually just turn them into silvers uh with trade. But uh because here uh draw can happen, I think uh Fellowship of Scribes is not going to be all that useful in the end, because uh, it's... you just draw, like, a little draw to X at any point. Where did these curses come from? Oh, Swamp Hag, okay, yeah. So I feel like here, yeah, I, I agree with the Guildmaster play there. Oh, and Villager, okay. Yeah, so both of them. So that's a good position for the the end game. Um, and you can just get rid of Pasture, I think. Um, yeah, so this is win in hand for... Uh, Arjun Nagpal here. Uh, could Shelney have won that with a... No, no. Only net four points from the, the farm landing. And then play the guild mastery. <laughs> you can even be fancy and buy a farmland if you want. Farmland into it. Do, 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 do. Okay, so game two, got Junk Dealer again, Sacrifice, so this time, uh, let's see, so for draw, Hunting Party is, I guess, the closest, eh, it, it would be draw if you have enough different things, um, 
So running, just running through your deck a lot. Can junk dealer down to get rid of estates and coppers. Um, there's a sacrifice as well to get a little extra oomph out of that, but might be a bit difficult because uh, again, like not really any villages here. So here you basically probably want just like a hunting party stack. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe a pair of, uh, I can't think what the best um, terminal would be here. I feel like a pair of gatekeepers wouldn't be bad if you can just like play them every turn. Um, because essentially it's just a, another gold to have. Because um, you've got gladiator and astrolabes. You don't need to keep the gladiator. Because um, basically I think what you would want to have like with your hunting party would be uh, just go like a couple mystics, some gatekeepers, uh, maybe an astrolabe or two, uh, and fortune. Silver, gold, and then... Uh, I feel like that should be faster than faster than rebuild, um, but not sure about that. I mean, I'm also saying that gatekeeper isn't isn't bad, which very likely is, because um, if you think about it, like why would you get a gatekeeper over a hunting party before they're gone? And then by that point pretty close to the end of the game when you should maybe have like a silver gold maybe pillages every once in a while but like wouldn't want that for the attack just for um well pillage has the same problem but vanishing golds um yeah there isn't like amazing draw or villages so um i don't know how worth it it is to try to build up to bigger than double province um, and depending on what ends up happening, maybe you can't even build to double province. Um, but yeah, it just depends on, uh, whether someone ends up going with, uh, rebuild. So, junk dealer, trash, and copper. Um, instead of a state, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I guess if you're going to try to go rebuild, then that's, uh, all right. Um, maybe saving them for a sacrifice. Trash the estates for points instead of for uh, nothing other than getting a bad card out of your hand. Which is not nothing. Um, and early game coppers are generally more valuable than estates. But really depends on what ends up happening. But yeah, it looks like sacrifice is also going to be used to, I guess, deal with the estates. So there's also Traveling Fair and Seas. Um, so Traveling Fair, I guess, could uh, accelerate a little because uh, I don't know how efficiently you can get to the point of getting to around like 10 or so. So um, like you can't really get... I, I don't think you're going to be able to get multiple cards really early on. Um, but if you hit 7, that's nice because you can top deck a hunting party or, uh, or whatever. Um, so, at least in terms of, you get to see the card that you just bought the last turn uh, in the next turn, for sure, then there is that. But I've also never really been able to optimally use Traveling Fair, I don't think, or even close. And uh, there's also Seize, which is uh, 
another point of like knowing just when is a, when is a good time to take that extra turn. Uh, do you, like do you want to use that as like I've gotten close to piling out and I need one more turn to do it, or do you want to like do it early on so that you can get like um, get a good lead? Um, just really depends on the kingdom, and that is at least another thing that I don't totally know how to uh, analyze when that's worth it to get a seize turn, because um, you probably wouldn't want to use it like mission turns, because um, you get one of them, and uh, yeah. But, I mean, I'm sure there are some circumstances where you would use a seize to get rid of, like, to deal with a, a bad turn that you know is going to happen. Um, but yeah, yeah. that uh, depends a lot on, like, how shuffles are going, how you're tracking your shuffles, what is where in your deck. Um, so, lots of different things to, to keep an eye on for knowing how to track your deck well. So one thing I can uh, already see, too, to make a note of is uh, prioritize trashing more um, and uh, make sure to, like, get your terminals, like, don't don't weigh over terminal yourself, because uh, as you gradually uh, get rid of your coppers, then you're going to be seeing your gladiators and sacrifices more. So you're going to end up getting great hands like Gladiator, Gladiator, Sacrifice, Silver Estate. <laughs> um, so yeah, like seriously, like really should just uh, like be getting rid of uh, estates with, with Junk Dealer. Uh, the extra points from Sacrifice aren't really going to be uh, too worth that. Um, although... Maybe, maybe they might, because, uh, eh, I don't know. The buys aren't the most easy to come by, but, uh, they certainly are a little easier with fortune, because uh, you're just going to get a ton of money to be able to do stuff. But, yeah, also just really de depends... And uh, you can use like easily uh, over over trash as well, but um, I think you want to get to the point of recognizing coppers and estates are are bad, and most games you don't want them, uh, and then you start to like aggressively trash, and then you start to realize, oh, okay, maybe this is like a time when I don't want to trash it quite as aggressively. Um, and here they can certainly go a bit more aggressively than, than what they've been doing. It's also a little hard too though that just all the cheap cards are like they're they're not they're just all all terminals, so you've gotta be putting a lot of silvers or treasures into your deck, which also isn't generally a good thing, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, both these decks are pretty heavily over-terminaled. Um, I don't know, maybe you want to start using Sacrifice as a, as a village to try to get rid of some of these gladiators. <laughs> but 
but yeah. And here's the point, too, where uh, Gatekeeper is going to be pretty much useless as an attack, because uh, Traveling Fair, like, if you do, like, Traveling Fair Hunting Party, then uh, you can just top deck it. Uh, and because it is uh, top decked, like you, you just get to choose the order of uh, effects in in cards. So you do the top decking first, and then oh, it's already moved, so it can't be moved into exile by gatekeeper. Boom, countered. So it was a good. Uh, Good, good uh, I guess, place to stop there if you wanted to make sure to get your uh, gold and fortune into the shuffle. So that was, that was good to recognize that. That uh, I mean, I, I think I think playing the junk dealer should have been like should have been doing that anyway, um, just to get work on getting thinner. But yeah, there's only one hunting party been bought, so. That's also a bit of a problem. Like, I think each deck would want to have it, because basically each deck is just working with a uh, five-card five, five card hand, and uh, it is going to be very difficult to get to high, high monies with uh, only eight cards, even with fortune. And, uh, yeah, if you don't want to, like, be playing your junk dealer for, uh, to trashing estates, then that's also a bit of a, a bit of a problem. Because right there, I feel like that should have been junk dealer for estate, sacrifice the gladiator for, uh, cards actions, uh, and then you can just be, like, drawing and doing something, um, because rebuild, uh, I think would be faster than faster than this right here with just uh, basically no thinning going on. Oh, and here, uh, if you want, you can buy two golds. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend it, but, uh... If you're gonna get a gold, that is the way to get around to exiling. But yeah. More trashing could uh, definitely be happening. Here uh, would probably be best to just sacrifice the gatekeeper, but sacrificing a copper is, uh, is pretty good as well. But I think that sacrifice should 100% be played over gatekeeper. Yeah, so, I mean, at least, like, the thought process would be, if you play Gatekeeper now, then that's another three coins to possibly get a lot of money in the next turn. But, since 
they're both working with five card hands, uh, you only have a five out of 13 chance of that actually working. Uh, because effectively, they're just Arjun Nagpal's deck doesn't even have uh, any cards really that can draw cards at all. Like it's just the one junk dealer. Um, unless they, they start to sacrifice gladiators or whatever. But yeah, Black of Village is really slogging it up. Okay, so going uh, starting off with the province, uh, I think deck wise, I mean turn wise, it feels like it certainly should be uh, scoring right now. But I think deck wise, probably still not great. Um, maybe should have spent that opportunity to get a get a fortune there instead. Um, especially with each person only having one sacrifice in our deck and taking like actively adding more victory cards into their deck uh, is no bueno with uh, the amount of draw going on here. And maybe at this point, too, like it wouldn't hurt to add a rebuild or two just to move through the deck a bit. But uh, I think uh, Arjun Nagpal's deck is better in the long term because uh, it's a bit more money dense. Like they're both pretty equally terminaled, but. Uh, Arjun Nagpal's got the fortune, um, so more often than not, we'll be able to hit eight at least, I think, than than Shalini. And maybe not even more often than not, but more often than Shalini, based on just how shuffle should go. Um, yeah, so like here, like definitely just junk dealer the gatekeeper but junk dealer is probably gonna get tossed well actually fortune's probably gonna get tossed like that would just absolutely hamstring the uh, this <laughs> this turn Okay, we're going for a Mystic here. With uh, the state of these decks, it's pretty much going to be just an expensive silver. Uh, you're basically not going to be able to draw with Mystic here because uh, it's about even chances of like copper or not versus, yeah, so it's just going to be pretty much impossible to try to uh, guess. Like, it, it'll just legitimately be guessing. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Arjun Nagpal at least able to still get a province from there. So, so what better of a better return? Yeah, so that'd be, that should probably be uh, Trash the Copper with Junk Dealer. Hunting Party to skip some stuff. Sacrifice the Gladiator and then Pillage and then... Okay. Interesting. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think seeing more cards is good, and getting rid of a gladiator uh, is going to be better in the long run. Another thing is uh, you don't need to spend all of your money. Like here, maybe would be a good place to take a seize the day. I haven't been tracking the deck enough to know like w w is there going to be a decent turn um, as a result of that. But I think adding a cut purse or sacrifice silver ash any anything you can get for four or less, like adding a card is just not worth it. Um, so yeah, okay. So finds a hunting party. So that's that's nice. Um, Good find. Um, yeah, very unlikely to actually be able to find the fortune though, and uh, maybe that actually was not good to have played that second hunting party uh, in light of that, because uh, both those hunting parties, both these golds, both the silvers have now missed the shuffle. Uh, so that shuffle is pretty bad. Sacrifice a gladiator some coppers, uh, some provinces, and the fortune. So, I think, yeah, probably the next two turns are going to be basically just hitting, like, four. <laughs> but, to be fair, I also would have just auto clicks the uh, hunting party there, and then instantly regretted it. <laughs> yeah, so here I think definitely just trash, trash the gladiator. You've got too many. I mean, trashing a copper is also not bad, um, but if you're just replacing a copper with a silver or an astrolabe, then, like, what even really? Okay, yeah. But that that turn, I feel like it, it had a good chance of being better if it, if they had gone with uh, trashing the gladiator instead. Yeah, with a hand like that, you kind of don't want to risk uh, playing a junk dealer. It's probably fine, but that could have been the province that it drew, so... Yeah, and I think with the state of both these decks, you don't really want to... You, you don't, you don't want to um, be trashing money to this, really. Um, I feel like that should be another gold instead of another duchy. Um... But, yeah, duchies are just going to make it harder to do, especially with uh, only having two hunting parties. Woo, cash money. All right, definitely sacrifice one of those gladiators. Or no, actually, actually don't. Um, I don't know what you would try to guess to reveal, but I think playing a gladiator would be well. It's a tough one, but I don't want. 
these things to potentially... I think... What is that last card? Is that the fortune? No, the fortune was last played last turn, so that's in the discard right now. Um, but the odds of drawing the fortune from the one, uh, one card of the next shuffle is very low. Okay, well, this actually might, might be the end of the game here. Um, if Arjun Nagpal reveals the right thing, then it's a win in hand. Uh, so let's see. Shelly's probably thinking about whether to reveal the mystic with the gladiator. I agree. I agree. That was uh, that was the play. A better play to not do that. Um, but yeah. So with a fresh shuffle. I think as Arjun Nagpal, uh, you would want to... Okay, yeah, and now it just doesn't matter. That's just a win in hand right there. <laughs> and, oh, right, duh. Only one fortune has been taken, so everyone knows exactly whose that is. And there's a 100% chance that Shelony does not have one in hand. But yeah, okay, so that's uh, game two, 2-0 uh, Arjun Nagpal. Oh, why'd you buy a traveling fare there? Come on. <laughs> yeah. In terms of end of game things, uh, it is not fun for anybody to, <laughs> uh, especially in like big pilots, like you don't want to like accidentally have played it, like unnecessarily play a card that makes you top deck things or just makes so you go click a choice every single time. So annoying. <clears throat> okay. Um, so let's see, what have we got on this one? Let me move my mouse out of the way. Uh, so the only trashing, and I say trashing, quote unquote, uh, is, is Traitor. Um, because it doesn't really end up thinning your deck other than coppers. Uh, and if you want silvers, which you don't particularly in this one because of Bandit Fort, then that's okay. But, um, yeah, we've got Band of Misfits, uh, we've got Galleria, Nobles, Mills. There's Pirate, too, so, um, I think Pirate is probably a mistake, um, unless it's just for, like, potions and uh, just, I guess, is like, extra buffers from the Cardinals, but, uh, yeah, so I think Familiar and, uh, Moat will both be worth it, although you gotta kind of balance it a little, but they're, they're good villages because Nobles can be villages, um, but they're probably more gonna be main source of draw, um, Hostelries are village, you can get some extra money from Mills, uh, there's Gamble as well, although with no thinning, uh, or, well, not not great thinning, that's going to be really hard to do anything. Um, so, I mean, like, if you've got a pretty good idea of what's uh, going to be on top of your deck, it might be worth it to gamble once or twice to, like, get a card off of your off your deck. Then, uh, on, have it on. Um, but that also just comes down to shuffle management, what ends up being useful. Uh, so familiar attacks will probably hurt this game, uh, so I think definitely would want to, 
I think you would want to get some familiars. Um, Shelby seems to be going a bit more for money. Um, like I, one silver to uh, to be able to open uh, and like hit some hit some monies. Uh, money the hit hit price points isn't isn't bad, but I think here probably a better. Uh, opening than silver would be uh, cardinal, um, just because it does the same thing, and you're going to want a cardinal more than silver uh, anyway. Um, you may not end up being able to play it sometimes, but especially in the early game, a cardinal is pretty much generally going to be fine. Um, and then... Uh, the Galleria is also nice, too, because, uh, well, no, you can't really do much. So, I mean, what you could do, potentially, is hostelry tricks to try to get extra buys, but there's not really ways to gain many cards. So, Galleria is basically just going to be like a terminal gold uh, most of the time. But... Yeah, you can you can build reasonably well here. Like you've got you've got all the components except for plus buy. So um, maybe you more want to just focus on uh, like. So I think I think a trader would be very good. Um, try to only use it on coppers ever, um, because uh, you don't want a lot of silvers. Um, but I do think having at least one silver would be necessary. Band of Misfits is uh, probably the, the best, well, probably, is, I think, the best five here. Um, because you can use it for a hostelry, a mill, or a cardinal. Um, or a moat. That also works, too. Um, but at least the moat, the, the car, cardinal is not really um, an attack to be worried about here. Um, because it's going to take a while for these decks to be able to get to playing a cardinal consistently. The one to worry more about is familiar, uh, but neither of them seem to be going for that. So that works as well, I guess. But yeah, familiar would be nasty here. Okay, and Shelly's going for familiar. Yeah, because curses are not easy to deal with. And uh, I think I'd still rather have a silver than uh, than a curse, to be quite frank here, but neither of those are going to be very easy to deal with. Okay, going for a band of misfits. I will make it. Yeah, so the pirate, I think, probably would be best basically just to use once and then never again because uh, it's just a treasure gainer and here you really don't want gold and silver um, you just want potions uh, so maybe playing a pirate would be nice to be able to hit three potion because often if you open potion then you're uh, not going to hit uh, price points because even even three potions is stupidly hard to get um yeah it's but yeah it's a mess <laughs> sometimes uh So, like, here, like, 
that's a bit unfortunate, like shuffle wise, that both of the moats ended up just on the bottom, but that is how it is sometimes. The thing is, Bandit Ford is minus two. Okay, I thought it was minus three. Maybe that's. Oh, I'm thinking Wolf Den. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, you're uh, kind of going to not want to have these treasures, so I would just not deal with them in the first place. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this, this one is also a little a little hard and annoying just because uh, the thinning is, is so awkward. So maybe, maybe for this one you just kind of... Uh, well, I mean, you can only get one buy anyway, so maybe you want to just uh, not bother with Trader, just try to, like, uh, draw as much as you can. So just mills, nobles, uh, and toss stories, essentially, and uh, I guess just try to make sure to end up with more points there. Um, take a province when you can, but mo I think most of the time just want to try to... Uh, do mill stuff here for money or galleries. That was a uh, kind of a long pause. I was about to be very angry if uh, if they decided to get a gold there. <laughs> so yeah, having uh, some extra horses would be nice as well with a uh, with hostelry. <laughs> but uh, also just yeah. This is, this is a bit of an awkward kingdom. And maybe the solution would be to just bite the bullet and get a couple... Uh, couple golds. I don't know. Cause yeah, just with the way Galleria works, like maybe you can get yourself like a uh, like you have to be able to hit twelve to even make it worth uh, like because you're just not really able to get stuff uh, during your turns. I'm just trying to think like there isn't any way to gain hostilities mid turns so that you can uh, discard uh, treasures and get horses. Uh, to just use as Galleria buys. So you would have to do, like, it, get a hostelry and horses at the end, but then, like, you're just drawing all of your treasures, so you would, it's going to be, like, basically impossible to make Galleria actually a source of buys. So, yeah, maybe, maybe you do just want to have, like, a couple golds and just try to, like, be hitting nobles and mill as often as possible and get problems as you can. Uh, maybe that's too fancy, and maybe just straight money, um, but, yeah. What would Wandering Winder do? <laughs> A good question to ask yourself for Dominion. Or, uh, just any, any, uh, good, good player. Like, what, what would a good, really good player do here? But yeah, this is a, this is a weaker board, so I think yeah, cardinal and uh, a cardinal might actually shine here, just because it is weaker, uh, a weaker board. Oh, why would you do this? Why? <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, now I now I'm angry. The uh, so here gold is not a card that you want. Uh, most kingdoms you don't want gold anyway, depending on who you ask. Uh, whether or not you should buy gold, the answer 99.99999% of the time is going to be no, absolutely not. What are you thinking? Um, gaining gold is still acceptable, but mostly for like trash for benefit. Here, there is not trash for benefit, there is trash for pain. Um, because the only trashing gold into other things that you can do would be six silvers, which uh, turns negative two points into negative 12, uh, which you don't want. So, yeah, but why would you buy gold when there are still nobles? Uh, that is just 100% not what you want to do. Because um, nobles are... Nobles are plus points, and they do way more for your deck, because they're village, they're draw. Um, so, yeah, but like it's a four-point difference there to have a gold instead of nobles. Um, and then, like, you don't even have the extra buys, so there is no point in really being able to hit much more than eight. Because, like I said, you need to be able to hit 12 at least to be able to make extra buy worth it, and even then... I'm sorry if that was a, a bit harsh, but gold is is definitely a mistake, and I do want to emphasize that that like here, you just should not have golds. Yeah, but anywho, uh, so that uh, all yeah, also not the greatest order there. You probably would have wanted to do. Uh, Band of Misfits as a hostelry, and then uh, draw with nobles, and then discard with mill, so you could just make sure, like, oh, I'm actually drawing bad stuff that I don't want, and also trigger your shuffle, so you're not putting uh, putting cards directly into the shuffle that you're trying to draw into. Um, so, just a little bit of shuffle management stuff there. Yeah, so I guess uh, another familiar, okay, another familiar would be decent, but yeah, the familiars, I guess, are a little late, like, they hurt a lot, but it also just kind of, like, started when, uh, like, you're both going to be not able to add curses into the deck very quickly, um, so yeah, if you can, like, open, like, potion moat, say, um, and then, like, as long as your moat doesn't bottom deck, you're able to get, you're pretty likely to get potion or potion familiar into your first shuffle. Um, and so then ideally, like it works, so like you get one familiar into your first shuffle, get a second familiar in, so you've got two familiars in, in a shuffle. Um, and then by then, uh, by then you're usually pretty good. Uh, you may need a third, but otherwise like, uh, pumping two curses per shuffle into your into their deck and being able to like, get a bit more through your own is going to be better on the whole. So here the problem was not getting the potion until the second shuffle. Um, so yeah, like you're just when you do that, then you're not going to be seeing your potion until like turn like six or seven, and then by then you're not getting a um, familiar end until like the third shuffle uh and so depending on where you see that then like it's just much much slower than uh potion cost cards are um and so that that's uh just a, a general problem of, of potion cards that like you have to have like a specifically dedicated uh card to be able to buy them uh and so opportunity cost wise if the potion were a silver then uh, you would be hitting five much more often, uh, or like fours and fives versus like two potion, three potion. Um, 
so here, like, yeah, you, it's really sad if you don't hit three potion, uh, with familiar, um, and literally can, like, is reason to resign after a couple turns, um, because you can just get swamped, and it's not fun to try to work your way back, but, yeah. So, just random some some thoughts on on po on familiars and like putting putting just potion cost cards in general and how to think about adding them to your deck. So I think I think the familiar is 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 good here because the the trashing is so weak and curses would get in the way. But it would be more more effective had it been gotten earlier and more familiars. So two, maybe even three, probably not three, uh, but two at least. So you can actually like be doing some damage because. Uh, in this entire game, one curse has been given out. So, <laughs> yeah, like, it's not, like, that's chump change. Like, you're each doing more damage to your own deck by, uh, like, points-wise, by having the uh, silvers and golds. All right, but well, looks like we're getting close to the end of the game anyway. Yeah, just get some nobles here, I guess. A duchy would be worth more, but yeah. So at this point, like you just need to score. Like, if you're gonna make any sort of comeback, then it would need to be more points. But it's a bit of a bit of a rough situation uh, to be down more than uh, one province worth of points in a single buy game. Yeah, so I think Band of Misfits is nil here, just to get a bit more money. Um, but it is not obvious what that should be. Okay, Cardinal works as well, I guess. And yeah, I think probably just might as well get an estate. Um, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. And this is why you want nobles over uh, over golds, but <laughs> yeah, look at that flexibility. And so at least uh, Shalini's last buy two of um, nobles over duchy is uh, that nobles goes into the shuffle rather than duchy. Duchy uh, doesn't. So here is probably not going to. Well, here Arjun Nagpal's got a, a win in hand again. Um, but yeah, better to see the nobles than a duchy. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's just, it was pretty over a while ago. Uh, but yeah, so this one, more acceptable that you chose not to get Trader, but uh, I think the Familiar could have been bad. Um, and then also don't, don't get, don't get Treasures, really. Um, like one Silver might be fine, but even Cardinal would probably be better than that. Because uh, Villages were 
pretty alright to come by. Um, yeah, so, okay, yeah, because my, <laughs> mine is six points right there. Okay, um, oof. Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, this is game four. Arjun Dog Paul is up 3 0. Um, yeah, this, uh, also, hmm. There is a difficult village because there is throne room, uh, but that's about it. Steward is pretty great trashing, though, so I definitely think, uh, do some like scrying pool stuff and uh, throne scrying pools that you can have actions to play inventors. Um, haggle, hagglers can make this go fast. So, um, yeah, I think here would open probably. For sure, steward. Um, and then I'm just going back and forth between inventor or silver, um, which would be better there. Like, I, even on a five, like, just open steward here, it sucks, but um, on, on a five, too, it would be steward guardian. Um, and then you can just trash the guardian a little later um, if it's getting in your way, which it will for scrying pool. You don't want to be adding extra non-action cards, but yeah, if you can consistently get throne room, it's, so it's just going to be a little difficult because there is no actual, like, easy, like, standard village. Um, so it does depend on being able to find throne rooms with each other or scrying pools. Um, but you, the best thing for sure does seem to be just to thin down to Basically, just um, maybe even oh, steward potion. That that's what you would want to open, I think. Um, not not inventor, but you definitely would want to get inventors while you still have uh, four, like um, the the chance to get four. So like that would probably be just like uh, basically just don't just be trashing for the first couple of turns with Stuart, like, aggressively trash till you have just two coppers left. Um, so I would say, like, get an inventor around that time, um, so you can start, like, inventing yourself throne rooms, or, like, buy a throne room beforehand, but, uh, yeah, definitely the opening should be, uh, Stuart's, uh, Stuart Potion. Um, that's my hot take. <laughs> Uh, but no, that's that's how I that's how I would play it. I would I would open steward potion here. Yeah. And again, inventor mega turn is a bit hard to pull off with just throne rooms, but you've also got Hagler there. You've got tragic hero. Um, so there are like some good buys and draw to be able to do stuff. Like obviously, best draw is going to be scrying pool, um, but there is some decent gaining. Yeah, uh, going for the castles is not what I would want to do, like at all. Okay, it's a double steward even. That's uh, that's really good. Uh, I like it. Um, yeah, so our, I, I I like the direction Arjun Nagpal is taking um, much more much more than Shalini's route because. Uh, Shelly's deck is liable to fall apart pretty quick. Uh, yeah, castles are just not uh, really the best without extra sources of buy. And Tragic Hero is pretty great, but it's uh, a little hard. Like, maybe you want to see way stewards at some point. I don't know. Um, probably see way in throne room would be better. But either way, uh, I don't think castles can really be competitive. Um, Maybe they might be enough of like a web of uh, alt VP, but very probably not. Cause if you can pull off the inventor mega turn, then uh, you can just like get things to basically nothing. And uh, I guess the key would be don't let duchies 
get to zero, but like do whatever like piling you need with the haggler in play. So this is not a great draw uh, for Arjun Nagpal. Um, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate that the stewards are both there. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're going for Emissary and Shani. That's a, it's all right. Yeah, so Forest Dwellers is, what is that, is an ally. It's been a favor to look at the top three cards. Well, see, the thing is, if you're like just aggressively thinned and then drawing a scrying pool, uh, forest Dwellers isn't really going to do all that much for you. Uh, so Scrying Pool is going to end up... It'll it'll take a bit of setting up, but Scrying Pool will be much better than Emissary pretty increasingly quickly. Yeah. So if you're going with castles, then um, the problem there is just it's going to be so hard to hit uh, hit seven. And like once you can get the seven, uh, the opulent castle, then that's pretty okay because you can make a lot more money, but. Uh, Yeah, it's going to be hard to buy the lighter castles. So, if uh, Arjun Nagpal just keeps their head, then it's not too much of a worry. Because, yeah, Shelly is just having some trouble even hitting six. Okay, um, I, I think it's still a little early for Hagler. Um, the Marauder, I, I don't like the Marauder for either of them. Because um, uh, they give you action cards, at least. So they, they suck, but it's not like that'll get in the way of Scrying Pool draw. Uh, but it looks like neither of them are going Scrying Pool. Which is interesting, because... Uh, Otherwise, basically, the only other draw is Emissary or Steward or Tragic Hero, and all of those, and except in circum special circumstances, are terminal, so just very hard to actually do anything. This is great, because you can put the Haggler and the Gold back down and just trash two coppers right here. Yeah, nice. Reading spec check, confirmed. Just 
just making sure that uh, neither of the players are listening into my amazing commentary. <laughs> Yeah, uh, okay, well that's a bit awkward, but I guess, uh, maybe the Emissary Throne Room with the Haggler, or... Because I don't want to trigger that shuffle yet. Um, or maybe... Emissary Potion? I do think it is a mistake to not be going for, um... For Shrine Pools, so I think here... Who's got the potion? Uh, who, who got a potion? When did, when did that happen? Shelony got a potion, okay. Yeah, if anything, I think Shelony should not have uh, the potion. I think Shelony should have more tragic heroes or emissaries or what have you. Um, yeah, Arjun, Arjun Nagpal's deck is much more set up for, uh, for Shrine Pool draw. Yeah, buying a gold. I have uh, talked about that enough, I think, in the last match, to just say buying gold is not good. Um, would probably rather have Sea Wade. Uh, and Haggler is when you buy. Okay, so when you. Okay, so you would have to actually buy a card to be able to get another card, but. Um, yeah. So Arjun Nagpal's got a much slimmer deck, but slimmer also means that it is going to just be heavily, heavily overterminaled. Um, so that is going to be a bit of a problem for doing basically anything. Uh, here I definitely think should have been uh, thrown the Haggler and get something to get another throne room or a potion. Uh, like, yeah. A slim deck is pretty good, but also you gotta, like, not terminal yourself so that you can play, like, one card per turn. Yeah, Seawaying Inventor, not not the card I would have Seawayed. Um, it would be either Steward or, or Throne Room. Please, please get a potion so you can get yourself a scrying pool. Okay, at least another throne room. <laughs> You're also getting another throne room, that's good. <laughs> That'll do. And just starting to score, I think that's not a problem because it's going to be getting even harder to hit eight. Mm -hmm. 
Oh no. Oh, Arjun. Uh, why are you doing this? Okay. Uh, interesting choice to not, uh, not throw in the Marauder there, or take the opportunity to trash with the Steward. But this deck is huge. Huge. Bigger than Gina. Uh, it was a terrible attempt, attempt at a Donald Trump impression. Not that that is uh, appropriate, I don't think. Okay, here stuff can actually get done by Yemeni. Oh boy, okay, so yeah. Uh, would definitely want to... Invent a potion... Well, you can't draw it this turn, but... So close. Yeah, I feel like here you would want a throne uh, inventor and steward. Uh, for one, just trash trash the marauder. Just just trash the marauder. Okay, yeah, Hagler, Hagler is, uh, is pretty hard as well, I guess. Um, please, just get a potion, please. <laughs> no. Your deck was set up for scrying pool. Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like kind of at a, yeah. All right, I'm gonna just say, I think uh, pretty significant misplay, um, just generally, uh, the strategy wise, like, I think that the way to go here is just aggressively, aggressively thin down. So you basically just got action cards and just jam your deck with actions for scrying pool and then like you can do so much more once you actually have some actions to play like here it's just it's just impossible to do anything because like you have to like without a scrying pool you have to have throne rooms come together and with only like three or four in a deck of 16 that's not very likely that it'll happen to actually like be able to like pair with a card that'll let you do anything so yeah. So, for Arjun Nagpal's deck, uh, was so well set up for, uh, for Scrying Pool, and should have had a, a potion added at least, like, three or four turns ago. Like, there should be, like, one to two Scrying Pools in this deck already. Um, but, yeah, you're just, like, not going to be able to do 
anything because uh, you're just so so over terminaled. And uh, with Shalini's deck, uh, too much action and victory, or too many, too many treasure and victory cards for for Scrying Pool. So I think uh, for them, they don't want a potion because that's a, a that could have been a silver. Um, like too many inventors, of course, but uh, yeah, they probably want more like tragic hero or emissary money. Is, is what they're kind of seeming to want to head more towards. But yeah, this is another turn where something can sort of get done, just because... Okay, please throw in the throne room. Alright, good. Yeah, but it's just, yeah, it's, it's rough because, uh, yeah, Arjun Nagpal's deck is just all terminals and then uh, basically no money density, so it's going to make buying things rough. Alright, here I think Trash uh, Abandoned Mine and Marauder. Alright, well good, at least you're getting more throne rooms. <laughs> but yeah, definitely the Marauder just why why did you why did you get a Marauder? <laughs> I haven't even really ever played it too, so it's just a card you've been carrying around. Which brings me to another thing, I guess. Uh, don't be afraid to trash action cards. <laughs> like, Marauder generally you shouldn't buy in the first place, but here it's just been another dead card that you can't play every single turn. And I mean, it looks kind of nice, like it's got decent art, but what is it doing for you if you're just not going to ever play it? And why would you play it when you've got emissaries, you've got stewards, you've got inventors, hagglers, like literally zero reason to have this marauder still. <clears throat> be kind of funny to see, I guess, like, just like a giant supercut of uh, various people saying, don't buy gold. <laughs> I should do that. That is a useful thing to do with my time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh, we've actually bought a scrying pool. How the tables, how the, how the turntables have tabled <sighs> and then here you go with all this money, uh, and nothing really to do with it.
And uh, I think you really need to be keeping an eye on uh, shuffles because uh, you're. I don't think you have any draw cards down there. Uh, so you're in for a rough next two turns. I need a whoop to do. You can buy castles. Oh, never mind. There's emissary. Okay. There's a third emissary. Woo. Oh, baby. And now we're okay. So now we're finally starting to do things. And oh man, if, the, if these throne rooms were seaway, oh baby. <laughs> but alas, that never ended up happening. Yeah, if these throne rooms were seaway, this uh, would probably be the end of the game. And I have to say, that's a little nice, at least, for Arjun Nagpal, that emissaries keep showing up at that, at the end of shuffles. Uh, but yeah. Oh boy, scrying pool here. Um, <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Ooh, that's really, really, really bad draw. Um, this is going to be an absolutely terrible shuffle. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. Okay, well, at least there's a ton of money. Uh, although it's not good, because the next three turns are going to be, well, what are you going to do with this? Uh, so, yeah, just lots of interesting stuff to try to try to deal with. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I'm going to take a quick break um 
and just let this game play out a little bit because it's still got some some juice to it. Oh, didn't uh, didn't notice the sea uh, wing emissaries. That's a nice little handy trick that you can do, but might be a little bit too little too late. But must needs get myself some water, uh, and I will be back shortly, probably still while this game is going on. So what is the game state here? Uh, looks like pretty close to where I left it. Um, Here might be a good place for Arjun Nagpo to also use uh, some of them favors. Although, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so that's a win for Shalini. Okay. Yeah, so Scrying Pool is a pretty good card. Uh, Marauder is not. <laughs> uh, neither one of you should have gotten Marauders. But, yeah. Definitely, uh, definitely would uh, hype up Scrying Pool some more. Okay, alright, moving on. At long last... Alright, we've got... Uh, farmland is the only way to trash anything, and um, it's pretty slow. Uh, but we got Star Chart. Um, so, draw-wise, Crossroads is going to be a pretty good draw. Um, and there are highways, but uh, also no buys, so doesn't really do much for you, unless you can manage to get exactly six highways, and then you can be cute and farmland anything into an estate, or estate, into a province. Um, any any card at all can be, you can turn coppers into provinces. Um, 
you got Overlord um, as well, which is usually pretty good in Band of Misfits. Um, for no reason at all, you can uh, Overlord Band of Misfits. Never mind, you can't Overlord Band of Misfits. Um, uh, but yeah, Wave the Squirrel as well. So lots and lots of draw, but no buys. And the only gaining is Farmland. So that's cool. Um, yeah, so I think here uh, you want to maybe just do like Overlords and Smithies essentially. Uh, like with some highways in. Because uh, the downside of Overlord is that uh, Highway is just a cantrip if you play it as an Overlord instead of a Highway. But um, yeah, like maybe like two, three highways. You don't need to go crazy on them. Um, and that's something that uh, people often don't realize, um, especially in like uh, the, the lower tiers, that uh, highways are really good, but like there's just no like way to buy to make them like, okay, yeah, like I've got this like three, three coins right here and uh, woo, I can, I can buy a province sure, but, um, then it's still the same problem of, like, um, yeah, how, how, like, how do you start, but, so yeah, highway isn't, like, super important, like, might as well get, like, one or two, but no, no skin off your back if that doesn't really end up working out, um, smithy, overlord, and crossroads are probably going to be the ones that you really want, um, alchemist here is not great, just because, uh, it's going to be very inconsistent at first, um, although, like, once you can get it set up, then it'll be pretty much good to go. Uh, and Star Chart can help uh, help out with that, so maybe what you would want to do, I don't know, is, like, uh, Star Chart Overlord if you have a 3-4, or um, Star Chart Smith even. Uh, but basically, all you're going to need is, like, uh, like building-wise, I would say, for consistency, you would want one or two highways, a uh, couple overlords, a couple crossroads, a couple smithies, maybe a secret passage or two, so you can like try to set up a crossroads and and a state or like crossroads smithy, um, something like that. Um, but yeah, otherwise like there's not much to do in this kingdom really. Um, it might be interesting, too, to think about, like, how can you make farmland useful? So if you've got one or two highways in play, uh, you could be turning coppers into secret passages or smithies, which would be good. Like, a little way of, like, getting some, like, little points for your crossroads and more draw. Um, but then you also just need to be careful, like, don't get, go overboard and, um, yeah. And, yeah, if you have overdraw, too, then you can just, like, play... Uh, play extra things as squirrels to be able to have a bigger starting hand. Yeah, that's kind of a problem with Cursed Village that uh, doesn't really work with uh, <laughs> with uh, Way of the Squirrel. Because you want your starting hand to be small. And uh, why would you... I don't know. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so what was it? Two... Three coppers, two estates... 
Who's that? Three Copper's Three Estates. That Overlord 100% should have been a crossroads. And then, uh, yeah, like you could actually like get stuff going. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, so Star Chart is also pretty decent, too. Like, it would be a good opening buy to just make sure, like, you can see something you want. But even even so, like, there's not really, like... Uh, well, no, I, I can't say that, like, there's not really anything that you want to see. Like, obviously, you want to see your action cards so you can get to the end of shuffles and get as much money as you can. Um, just But you want to be able to hit four relatively consistency, uh, consistently. So... As long as you're making sure to be able to hit four and, like, know that, like, okay, I've got, like, three coppers right here. So you want to, like, open with, like, a silver, too. Like, silver star charge, silver smithy, uh, silver overlord, overlord, uh, I don't know. No, but the, with the star charting, um, just making sure that you can get, like, a draw card in your opening hand. Or uh, if you have a lot of draw cards, just put a village in there. But, yeah. Uh... Yeah, so it's, uh, like, there is a lot of draw here, so it is pretty easy to get consistent. So maybe, maybe Halo just, like, don't even do silver, um, and just have, like, a few highways so that you can just use your seven coppers to buy a, buy a province each turn. Um, and then, like, there should be enough, so, like, the building would basically just need to be, um... Can you consistently hit like the five or six that you need to be able to hit? Um, and yeah, I don't think I like getting uh, trashing an estate into a potion there. Uh, of all the draw options, alchemist is probably the worst one. Um, I mean, yeah. So there are like squirrel, and there there are other ways to mitigate for the problem of early game when you're uh, trying to make sure that alchemists line up with potions so you can like put the potion in play and keep your alchemist uh, on top but this is probably the worst draw option and also suffers from the same problem that I was talking about earlier with potion cost cards that they require a potion and so that potion if it were a silver then like would be that much easier to try to get like a province every turn like keep you a bit more consistent if you're just like need to like needing to hit five or six each time um that like you've got a little more wiggle room if you've got a silver with a potion that's just another card that you've got to draw through um and so sure like squirrel and uh secret passage and whatnot can make sure to like uh, make sure to help put potions and alchemists together but uh there are just times in games like this with no real thinning that uh you're just not going to be able to get alchemists and potions together, and uh, it really, really slows you down. It's not as bad as if you like play two or three masterminds and then like don't have any actions in the next hand. Those are awful, awful, awful feeling. Um, like that just like can cripple you. Um, like it's not going to cripple you if you miss alchemists on top, but. Um, yeah, like, it's it's just uh, another thing to buy that, like, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I just think it's not the greatest choice. So you can definitely use the Overlord as a crossroads here. Like, that would do, well, just the same as a smithy, but... Feels cooler. To make crossroads draw work. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, highway is the worst option there. That's just a cantrip, so. You're, uh, you're going to want... 
All right, maybe one, two more highways, but crossroads, high, two highways overlord and alchemist. Yeah. I think treasures here, you don't really want those. Um, like you just need to be able to hit highway and then you're, you're fine. Yeah, that was uh, not necessarily the best sequence of uh, putting things. Uh, like, if your draw is going to be more based on... Because uh, there, I think, like, playing with Overlord as a crossroad would have been better. Uh, but, yeah, I don't you know. Like, already chosen, like... Uh, and Seeker Passage is uh, kind of a dumb interface, because uh, you have to undo the card play to be able to uh, choose the different thing, I think. But either way, it's one of those where, like, you... you you have chosen the card and there's no way to uh, no way to change the card without asking for an undo. Um, like you can't just like deselect the card that you want to put somewhere. Which is an oversight, but that's one of the it's not a problem. It's not a huge problem. Uh, I don't really play with Secret Passage as much anyway. <laughs> I haven't seen Secret Passage in a long time actually. It's been quite a while. Risky and probably not the best move um, to do that. Because now the Alchemist has missed the shuffle rather than being back into the shuffle. Oh, there's another one. Okay. Well, that makes things a little bit better. Oh, yeah, and Settlers, too. Settlers are great. Because, <laughs> I mean,. It's not like you're going to be discarding stuff for draw to X, but just to be able to pick up the uh, extra, extra coppers in the meanwhile. Yeah, even. Yeah, I would maybe even say, like, farmland coppers into crossroads if uh, uh, you don't have any highways in play. But uh, it's also not the greatest idea, because your money is kind of valuable, at least, still. Uh, I do not think that treasures are the correct way to go in this kingdom, either. Um, but it's a little... It's a little bit nice, at least. Just make sure that you can hit uh, hit price points. And like honestly, here, like might as well like just buy another highway. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the great thing about this kingdom, because it's pretty bland otherwise, but um, the highway split just does not matter at all. Because um, <laughs> as long as you like have built correctly, you can also get a province every turn just fine.
Uh, hold on. So crossroads are just going to be uh, getting better and better, um, so that's nice. But yeah, and there's just not even much like squirreling going on and whatnot. But it is what it is. Uh, highway should have been played first there, just in case uh, you could draw other stuff. Uh, but yeah, this one, uh, I think the strategy that they're both going for is all right. Uh, like. Because it's just a board that does not does not offer much, um, but yeah, it's just like micro stuff, like making sure to keep track of shuffles, playing order, because um, it, it does matter. Um, here, maybe what you would want to do is farmland a gold into a province, maybe. Just straight buying a province, I think, is fine, but probably would be better to start thinking about farm landing gold. Put the highway back on top, I would think. <coughs> it's probably not going to be able to draw you anything too useful, and you've already got... Yeah, see, so all your treasures are here, and then, like, your alchemists are missing. So, I think highway should have been kept on top, just by a province while you had the chance. Because then you're just going to get killer winner hands like that. And you don't even have star chart to manipulate the shuffles a little bit. All right, a bit of a bold move, but uh. Okay, so yeah, that should have been highway first, uh, so you could just draw more. Because uh, one card really did would make a difference. Because if you could uh, find some gold and you could farmland those into and like win just because farmland and province. Uh, and then here is not a great situation because you can't even afford duchy. So it's looking a little bit rough for Shalini here. Yeah. 
yeah, and buying a duchy here is basically going to seal it. And uh, definitely need to buy a duchy too, because, uh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> and so then, um, no, I can't even get a losing tie. Uh, so crossroads, smithy. Oof. Not a fun draw. Oh. Yeah, the farmland just doesn't help there either. <clears throat> well, at least most of the highways are down here, so I think there's still enough for Arjun Nagpal to win this coming turn. But, uh. Okay, highway first, and then Overlord is. See what you need. Like crossroads is great here. Um, so the problem is though, like eight points down. So that's going to be losing tie, unfortunately. All right, and just decides to take the take the L. All right, so that's four one Arjun Nagpal. And we're heading into the final game. Yeah, Shalini, we all needed to buy in that one. <laughs> that would have made the kingdom a lot more interesting if there had been plus buy. Alright, so we've got alchemists again. Uh, we've got great trashing here, uh, but also no buys. There are at least gains. Uh, you can get a buy um, once every uh, 24 idols played. <laughs> Uh, so there's that. So don't count on it, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, so this is another uh, single single buy board at least. But you can do like some workshop stuff to like workshop yourself some more raises or shiny towns, vassals. Um, yeah, I think basically this one you want to do more like just like a vassal stack maybe um, with like paddocks. Uh, some shanty towns, and then like paddocks and shanty towns would be more than enough for for actions, especially towards the end of the game. But uh, yeah, so what would it open? Uh, I don't know if you want doctor. I think that gets you too thin too fast that so you just don't have time for uh unless you were to do like doctor workshop and that's not great to have two rolls with uh, that few cards in the deck are going to be together all the time Ooh. sorry yeah so i think raise is pretty good open and uh raise workshop raise silver raise vassal all of those work Alright, Shelanie's going for Alchemist again. Um, yeah, I talked about 
alchemists already, but they're also here not the greatest thing to be going for. Oh, they're both going for alchemist. Okay. I mean, there's really no point. Like, you've got Paddock right there. Paddock gives you two alchemists every time you play it. Yeah, Enchanty Town early on is going to be better. Uh, well, just while you have no, like, actions, really. So, yeah, Alchemist is not the greatest of options. Um, yeah, like, basically rule of thumb with Alchemist. If there are other ways of draw, it's probably going to be better. <laughs> So yeah, Paddock, Shantytown, Vassal even, like Raze, like, it's not all draw, but it is at least like more sifting, and yeah, it's just going to be strict, pretty pretty much better than Alchemist, for sure. Or, well, I mean, I'd say for sure, but pretty, pretty much going to be just better than Alchemist. Got some idols too, I see. Uh, yeah, idols, that's another one that's okay. Um, like, it's it works best if you can play them every, play a pair of them every turn, because uh, boons just aren't that great, and cursing your opponent is pretty good. Um, okay, yeah, so uh, another. Uh, no, on order. Uh, when you are playing with idle, you always want to play your idle first, um, rather than last. So, uh, that way then you can, like, if you get the wins hex, uh, <laughs> then you can put the, like, copper in play if you haven't bought anything yet. Yeah, but anyway, no, because, like, it might make you do stuff where, like, you just don't have any um, treasures on hand to be able to uh, discard, so, like, if you, so, like, as ha just happened, if you play your idol first, then you get, uh, like, could have had the opportunity to discard a copper for some four, up to four cost card for Earth's Gift uh, on Shalini's side, and then on Arjun and Angpal's side, um, you got the wind's gift, which usually is not, um, that drew your, an estate, and, well, yeah, it, it drew what it drew, but you're still in the treasure playing phase, so even if you didn't have that copper in hand, then you can put it into your hand. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, some interesting idle stuff that goes on but yeah cursing 
cursing would be good, especially if one person falls a bit behind on trashing, because uh, the more you can play your idols together, then the worse their deck's going to be, the less likely they're going to be able to play their idols together, they're less likely they're going to be So it's just a bad time if, uh, if you're able to curse more effectively. Um, there is a lot of good trashing, though, and, uh, like, both in hand and in deck, so, um, it's not like cursing will become too much of a problem, uh, but, you know. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, and, uh, yeah, to the point of, uh, no plus buys, um, it certainly is at least, like, sort of interesting to try to think about how do I build effectively so I can build as fast as possible, but then also just hit province consistently. Because if you can if you can figure out how to do that, and this is, this is like paradoxically like these are the hardest kingdoms. Um, I mean, I'm sure people would say that they're a lot easier, and like there are like ridiculous, like absolutely ridiculous kingdoms where you're gonna want to think for a good like five to ten minutes per turn about exactly what you have and what you can do, uh, where games just explode. Uh, and here, it's not one of those kingdoms, but it is a question of when do you appropriately green? How do you know like what's in your deck and whether your deck will hold up when you start greening? A lot of these things, uh, so alchemists get a little worse once you start greening because that makes it less likely to find your potion. Uh, shanty towns get a little better when you start greening because you're less likely to have other actions in your in your hand. Um, so it's a it's a bit of a give and take of like what are the cards that I need in my deck to be able to most effectively just get get to a province every turn. Um, yeah, uh, I see that some people have banks, uh, and that's interesting, because uh, you want treasures, which ideally you wouldn't want to have, um, and there's no buys, so it doesn't matter if you hit, like, 50, 50, 50 dollars, um, which you can easily do with banks, um, yeah. Oh man, if that scepter were counterfeit, oh man, counterfeit bank is, mm, just gorgeous, gorgeous combo, um, but alas. Uh, yeah, so that's like mega turn material. Uh, and this is just, yeah, plot. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I have not been paying enough attention to know whether taking that alchemist would be a reasonable. Uh, let's see, where's, where's the potion at? Uh, okay, shuffles their deck. Plays a potion the last turn, so potions and discard, yeah. So that was the move right there, not taking taking the copper, not the alchemist. Or, well, maybe not the move, but a good one. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, treasure payload... You don't really want that, like, um, you probably want, like, a few more villages so you can get some more terminal action, and then whatever is, like, over, you can just use as Way of the Sheep, so it's gonna be, like, this, this is even a lot easier to do, um, just, like, a single game, because all of your, any of your actions can be an extra plus two if you need it to, especially if you can play multiple at once. Yeah, so Wind's, uh, Wind's Gift is already gone, so that was fine there, but generally it's, as I said, it's a better idea to play play your uh, idols first. Also, don't be afraid to trash estates, too. Like, obviously, be careful of, like, shuffles that you trigger, but, uh, yeah. Because maybe, 
Yeah, I don't know whether trashing the state would have been better before or then, but it's also pretty good to clear two provinces off the top of your deck. Honestly, I'd go to the Alchemist here. Like, I, w I wouldn't have started greening quite yet by this point. Like, I'd want... If I if I were using Alchemists instead of Horses... Because, um, okay, so that is fair, I guess, to... Um, like, you do have to, like, slam the raises pretty hard uh, for Paddocks to become worthwhile. Um, but even Shantytown would probably still be decent decent draw. Um... Like, it wouldn't do quite as much. Yeah, so, hmm. Maybe Alchemist is alright, because uh, there is the problem of uh, single buy, so Paddock is very difficult as a source of actions. Um, but then there's Shantytown in place of that, so, like, worst comes to worst, you've got, like, Shantytown, two Paddocks, and, like, that's still pretty, pretty good. Um, or, I mean, worst comes to worst, but you just don't get to see your horses quite as fast. Um, so... Yeah, like, they're, it's still going to be better than Alchemist, but, it, like, it might not, like, work out quite as easily. Um, now, if there were, if Paddock were Animal Affair instead, like, you still can't count on that to be a source of plus buys. Like, if there, if Animal Affair has to be, uh, so rule, another rule of thumb that I've found, like, if Animal Affair or Paddock or whatever, like, if they have to be the source of buys or actions, because, like, based on, like, whatever, like, the number of empty piles, and it's single game, it's basically not going to happen, and it's just better to, like, try to just blitz the provinces, because you'll be able to get those to pretty much empty before you, like, can really do, like, make paddocks and uh, animal fairs actually become worthwhile. Uh, or not worthwhile, but become, like, start doing scary stuff. Uh, but yeah. Do, do, do. Yeah, so, uh... <laughs> yeah, Paddock is interesting. Like, definitely, definitely would prefer to have, uh... That as the, the draw over, over Alchemist, but... These decks are just built different. Yeah, top decking Alchemist. I think that's just a, the right right play right there. Uh, maybe maybe another raise would have been worthwhile, but either way, like um, yeah, doing pretty well. And this is the downside of Shantytown. Uh, <laughs> like I, I I flippantly say like oh you just use Shantytown, but uh, yeah, it's one of those cards that seems to hate me. Uh, and that's one of the things I don't like about it. Just like ugh. Why bother even playing this here? But, uh, yeah. It is not as bad as Native Village. Uh, I have to say, I'm quite sad that Native Village made it through to Seaside Edition 2. Uh, now that there's some more space on my ban list, I can, I can put that there. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I just seem to have, uh, terrible, terrible luck with, with Native Villages. That, uh, like, they're supposed to be sort of a thinner, uh, or, like, maybe sort of a drawer, but it always just so happens that, like, when I have two native villages, instead of the copper or estate that would actually be good to set aside on the native village map, I set aside the other native village. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is just not a card that, that brings me joy. But anyway, yeah. Um... Doo, doo, doo. Yeah, Moon's Gift, uh, what might you want to set up on top there? I think, honestly, probably just skip it. Because um, you wouldn't you wouldn't want to put your potion on top here, because your alchemists are already going to be, uh, going to be just stuck, so. 
that's a, another card that you have to get out of the way. Um, so like that potion could have been an alchemist, potentially, based on how the shuffles went, but yeah. So there I think uh, just passing on the moon's gift would have been better. Oh, hey, look at that. Plus buy with uh, <laughs> not much at all to do with it. Um, I mean, at this point, with, with scoring going on, like technically speaking, it should be a duchy. Uh, but with single buy and more than province up, uh, like alchemist raise would be fine. Um, although, yeah. Is it gonna last another shuffle? Like, is it is it worth it to buy those over the over the duchy? Um, so yeah, that's a, a thing to think about there. Um, Shalini trying to claw their way back, um, but yeah, it is quite difficult given the parameters of the kingdom. Yeah, so the way this is going, yeah, I think this might take another shuffle or two to try to deal with everything. Um, So, I think don't play the doctor here. It'd be cool if you could uh, get one of those, some of those coppers out of the way, but uh, yeah. And sure, why not? You just get a gold. Like, <laughs> yeah, no. Don't actually do that. Like, you don't, you don't need a gold. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it is better than buying gold, but uh, yeah. No, you don't. You don't need a gold here. You're good. You've got banks. Um, but yeah. Uh, so just. Oh, look at that. Uh... Oh, what a sad, sad seas gift there. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Yeah. And then uh, just taking a look. So that's a. Uh... I believe that's 5-1 Arjun, Arjun Nagpal. Um, but yeah, uh, so good games, both of you. Um, and then, yeah, uh, best of luck in the rest of your season. Hopefully they will be a little less dry. The tables and kingdoms you get will be a little less dry. All right, well, thanks, and... Goodbye.